Hello everyone, this is Pamela Coey. I hope you are doing super well. I'm really excited. I've got a brand new course in acrylic and mixed media. It's all about working in a series with complex color, creating cohesion in four paintings from beginning to end. I want to tell you a little bit about this course. So why did I create this course? Well, first of all, as you probably know, I love to teach. This course is definitely for you if you love acrylic and mixed media. This course shows you how working in a series leads to a cohesive voice. Let's talk about that first. Why work in a series? Well, I love working in a series because it increases my momentum, my productivity, and for all of you, it's a real insight into your own artistic DNA. Each panel that you work on influences the ones next to it, so you have more opportunities to really discover what you love. You know, the colors, the shapes, and surface quality. It's all of these things seen together in several paintings at a time that are what are known as your cohesive voice. This is what your artistic DNA is all about. Let's talk design and complex color. Hmm. Complex color, how do you get that? Well, don't worry because this course, I'm going to show you how I get complex color. It's something I absolutely must have in my paintings. You can watch over my shoulder as I work on four acrylic mixed media paintings from beginning to end. In a total of 12 hours of video, there will be lots of discussion and bonus videos on acrylic and mixed media. I will be talking about glazing, collage, mark making, sanding, gouging, and in the bonus material, I have lots of techniques that I'd love to share with you, including image transfers, stencil transfers, paint transfers, how do you fix dry marks, how do you determine the pH of paper, and so much more. And by the way, these bonus videos are backed by popular demand. They were such a hit in my first acrylic and mixed media course that I thought I would include them here as well. But you know, technique alone can only get you so far. Instead, you'll see how I use many techniques with repetition and variation to create harmony, unity, and cohesion. I work on four paintings at a time, letting each painting inform the others, allowing lots of cross-pollination. I'll also show you how I clarify using specific acrylic techniques to help harmonize the final work. Lastly, I'll show you my favorite way to varnish each painting for a satiny and caustic-like finish. The bonus videos alone have tons of great acrylic and mixed media techniques. And don't forget, I have other courses too. They all work together or on their own. My very first flagship course, Powerful Design and Personal Color, shows you my nine stages of creativity to discover your personal voice. My next course was acrylic and mixed media techniques, where I took a painting from beginning to end, and I even got stuck in the middle. So if you haven't taken these two courses, I encourage you to take a look at my homepage, www.artandsuccess.com. I hope you'll join me in this course. You'll have me as your virtual coach. Nine hours of video demo and three hours of bonus video with lots of acrylic and mixed media technique. There's a 30 day money back guarantee. And if you join me, you'll have 24 seven access for life. We have a lot to discover and experience together. Let's get started. I see an edge sticking up then. I might just, um, like this one actually was sticking up from before. It's an older piece, but let's put some underneath that. Sometimes they're just stubborn. Glaze colors go on there, so. Okay, there's that. Is 
This is, uh, you know, we talk about final touches. I'm, these paintings are nowhere near final touches, but when it comes to any particular, like, subcategory of what you're doing, so let's say that I'm, I'm pursuing shape now, shape that I really love. Now I can do a haphazard thing like I just did, but what I'm doing now is I'm actually looking at the potential of shape and saying, okay, uh, I really care about shape and I'm refining the kind of shape I care about. Dramatically cut down on the amount of texture, but it's still mid-tone. Got to let it dry before I can sand it back, and it's going to look foreign until I do. But just knowing that is um, really helpful, because then you don't panic. <laughs> I do like that gold there, I think, and just not sure. See, this will be less difference in value, so it stands out less than, like, say, if I were to put it here, then it's too obnoxious. Um, As I was looking at it from a distance. Um, I want to darken that. I want to make it a really nice dark green. So here's green, here's red. That's a nice deep dark. Almost looks black, but it's not. So I think let's put that in here. And then here's the cadmium yellow light, kind of putting it down here. All right, so I'm doing this demo because when we glaze, we have to be aware of what we're doing. So um, I'm going to start off by putting the tints, which would mean that I'm going to take ultramarine blue, combine it with white, because that's what makes a tint. It doesn't really matter how light you're going to go here. You're just, you, know, you just want to put a swatch of tinted ultramarine blue. And I'm going to put it on this side. And what I'm going to do is, just like I did here, I'm going to put a little sample here. So just like we did with the other tints, tones, and shades, and, and these three main, main colors, I'm going to put a little bit of the phthalo here. Phthalo green. This is phthalo green. There we go. All right, and then I'm just going to spread that out a little bit so you can kind of see it. It is very, you know, it's dark. So the question is, when you glaze, you know, if, if the color that you're glazing with is really dark, it can change the value of the base color, as you can see here. You can also use these little little um, jelly. They're they're flexible and they're seems like a rubber and they've got different textures. You can kind of see um, the edges here. There's a couple different kinds and you know you can play around with um, making these interesting designs in the surface like that. So if I take a sheet of paper and it can really be anything. Like here is a part of a a book page that I tore out. Um, you can lay that down. When I peel that away, we'll see what the other side is what I was mostly interested in. So there you go. There's a book page with an interesting pattern on and you know that may come in handy for a future collage project. Now there's a bit of a ghost image here but you don't really have to try and get 
every last bit of uh, paint up there. Just the fact that I've taken one piece of paper on top of that, that's going to work pretty well. Here's one.